Hey guys, Mr. Riz here. So I'm gonna help you go through the 2.1, 2.2 review. So uh, let's get this started. This might be a little bit long, but uh, buckle in. Here we go. All right. So uh, first question is, okay, what's the derivative of y equals two pi? Uh, you know what? I just realized here some of these questions might be mixed up in a different order, um, and that's just gonna be okay. So. All right, so the one thing, 2 pi, 2 pi, we look at that and we might think pi is like an x, so it's just 2. Now, the derivative of 2 pi, since pi is a constant number, would be 0. Uh, so any constant number, the derivative of it is 0. All right, next, what is the, yeah, these are mixed up. So you might have to go back and forth through this video if you need some help uh, with these. What, find the derivative of 3 minus radical x times 3 minus radical x. Okay, so if we were going to find the derivative of this, we need to simplify the expression first. So to distribute the three, we get nine minus three radical x. Distribute the radical x, negative radical x, we get a minus three radical x. And then negative radical x times negative radical x is a positive x. So the equation is nine minus six radical x plus x. Ooh, no. I realize none of these are the answer, so I'm going to have to change my answer key here. Um, yeah, because so both of those are minus, right? Okay, so if we take the derivative of this, we have to realize that this is 9 minus 6x to the 1 half power plus x. And then negative times negative is a positive. Okay, so if we take the derivative of this, 9 goes away, that's a constant. 6 times a half is negative 3. x drops down to the negative, no, not to the negative 1 half power. That's already 1 half. All right, and then x goes to 1. And moving on here, if we want to rewrite this expression here, this would be negative 3 over, since it's negative, it's going to be over, radical x on the bottom, and then plus 1. So this one should be the answer, and I'm going to go through right now. I'm going to pause the video and change all of these questions. Okay, there we go. Got that taken care of. Um, okay, next problem here. I'm just going in order the way that they appear on my screen here. Uh, if we have 1 over x to the fifth power, so we have to change this to x to the negative fifth power. So doing the power rule, we're going to put that negative 5 in front, drop it down once to negative 6. So which answer is this one? It would be right here. All right, it'd be negative five over x to the sixth power. The negative exponent just puts it on the denominator. Okay, next problem, here we go. All right, we got the cube root of x to the fifth power. So rewrite this as uh, x to the fifth power over three. So the cube root makes it the one-third power, but it's x to the fifth, so it's five-thirds. So the derivative of this would be bring the exponent in front, five-thirds x, and drop that down by one. So we're going to subtract three-thirds, which is two-thirds. So the answer should be c here, five-thirds x, still the cube root of x squared. No, yeah, those answers get mixed up. All right, find the derivative of 1 over 2 radical x. All right, so we have to rewrite this. 1 over 2 is 1 half. Since x is on the bottom, it's a negative power, and it's inside the square root. It's 1 half. So this is 1 half x to the negative half power. So the derivative of this, we're going to multiply that together. So it's going to be negative 1 fourth, and we will subtract 1 from 1 half, or negative 1 half would be negative 3 halves. So the answer should be the first one. Negative one over four, and on the bottom, we got a radical x cubed. Okay, three times the fifth root of x to the nine. What's the derivative of that? All right, so I guess I didn't put find the derivative, but it's probably assumed here. All right, so this should be three x to the, we have the fifth root, so it's over 5 and to the ninth power. So 3x to the 9 fifths power. Okay, so multiply 3 times 9 fifths, that's 27 fifths, and drop it down by 1. So we're going to subtract 5 fifths from it and be 4 fifths. So which answer is that? 27 over 5 
This one's close, but it is going to be D here. 27 over 5, and then the x to the fourth, because that's the power on top, and the fifth root, so that would be choice D. All right, here we go. That's an easier one. Find the derivative of radical x. Well, this is x to the 1 half power, so we have 1 half x to the negative 1 half, or 1 over 2 radical x. We've seen that probably quite a bit. All right, we did this problem here. It's the plus 1. Okay, find the derivative of 2x plus 3 squared. Well, what we need to do here, we got to figure out what 2x plus 3 squared is before we take the derivative. So we'll FOIL this out. Let's see, we get 4x squared. We get a 6x and another 6x, so that's a 12x. That's a terrible 12. And then plus 9. So if we want to take the derivative of this expression here, just do the 2 times 4, that's an 8. Drop it down a power x. 12 times 1 is 12. It just goes away, and then 9 goes away. So just 8x plus 12. All right. Here, if we have a quotient, 2x squared over x minus 3. Okay, what we want to do is we're going to divide everything by x first. So 2x squared divided by x is just 2x. x divided by x is 1. 3 divided by x is 3x to the negative first power. So now that when, when we take the derivative, 2x goes to 2, 1 goes away, and then the negative 3x to the negative first, so negative 3 times negative 1 is a positive 3, it goes down to the negative second power. So the answer should be, oh, it's right there, we don't have to simplify it. Okay, next, if f of x equals negative 3, okay, all we got to do is take the derivative of this. This one's pretty straightforward. Negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 4. Okay, we're just going to do the negative 3 times the 2, which is negative 6. The 6x just goes to 6, and the 4 goes away, so it should be negative 6x plus 6. All right, next, find the derivative of this one here. All right, a lot of powers here, so we just kind of maybe take our time. All right, we're going to multiply 3 fifths times negative 4 fifths. So we multiply 3 times negative 4, that's negative 12. 5 times 5 is 25. So it's negative 12 over 25x. We'll drop that down 1, so over 9 fifths. And then minus 3x just becomes minus 3. So it looks like that would be choice C. Yeah, choice C. Not A, because that's 3x, so choice C. All right, 11 here. Find the derivative. All right, we want to just straight up power rule. 4 times 4 is 16, so this should start out 16x cubed. So it's going to be between those two. Then minus 3 times 3 is 9, so minus 9x squared, both of those. The minus 9 goes away, so it's just 16x cubed minus 9x squared. All right, if we have 3 over x squared, find the derivative. The derivative of 3 over x squared, we have to write as 3 times x to the negative second power. So we're going to go ahead and multiply the 3 times the negative 2, which is negative 6, drop it down a power. Negative 6x to the negative third, which would be the last choice here because the negative third puts it on the bottom as a positive 3. All right, next one, pretty straightforward derivative here, power rule, x cubed becomes 3x squared. That's the only choice I see here. We'll just double check. x squared becomes 2x, and 3 goes away. So 3x squared plus 2x, piece of cake. Ooh, doggy, these look like big numbers, but they're not too bad here. All right, 6x to the 30th power would be 6 times 30 is 180x to the 29th. Okay, so that's the first three here. Minus 2x to the 15th, so that would be minus 30x to the 14th power, which is good so far there. Then we'd have a plus 12x squared, which is what all those have. We'd have a minus 2, and the plus 1 will go away. Look at that problem. All right, we already talked about that one, 2 pi, 0. All right, find the derivative of 2x squared times 3x minus 4. We do need to rewrite this problem here. This should be a 6x cubed minus 8x squared. Then we're going to take the derivative of that. So the derivative of 6x cubed would be 18x squared. 
and the derivative of 8x squared would be 16x. And so there would be our answer. Okay, all right, now we're doing some other things here. So big old review of just a lot of derivatives, making sure we can handle those. So next, write the equation of a line that is tangent to 3 over 8x minus 2x squared and goes to the point. Okay, so if we ever want to find, we're doing a y equals mx plus b problem here. All right, we know that our y is negative 35 over 4. That's fun. We don't know what our m is. We know our x is negative 2, and we're going to have to solve for b. Well, the way that we can find the m is to remember that the derivative will always tell us the slope at that point. So if we take the derivative of the equation, we get, all right, that'd be 3 eighths minus 4x. So the slope at this equation here, we're going to take our x value and plug it in. So f prime of negative 2 would be 3 eighths minus 4 times negative 2 or 3 eighths plus 8. All right, so if I was um, using fractions here, it'd be 64 over 8, so that would be 67 over 8. Uh, I'm sure there's a decimal to that. Uh, probably 8.375, but we can put 67 over 8. And then to figure out B, we need to just go ahead, plug that into this equation and solve that. So, okay, we would have negative 35 over 4 equals, all right, 67 over 8 times 2 would be negative 67 over 4 plus B. We'll add 67 over 4 over. So if I add 67 over 4 to the negative 35, that'd be a positive 32 over 4, which is, oh, well, that works out to be just 8. All right, so there's our answers here. Let's see if that's right. 67 over 8 and 8. Remember, we can always double check this on Desmos by typing in this equation, typing in the point, and then typing in what our, what our answer is and should just touch the point in that line. All right. Write the equation of the line or lines that are tangent to x cubed minus 11x with the slope of 1. Well, this is kind of easy. We know the slope is 1, so that's going to be our first answer. y equals mx plus b. All we know is that our slope is 1. we got to find an x and y and then solve for b. Well, we can find our x by taking the derivative and setting it equal to 1. So the derivative, which tells us the slope, which is 3x squared minus 11, we want to figure out when that equals 1. Okay, so we can go ahead, add the 11 over, so 3x squared would equal 12, divide by 3, x squared would equal 4, and take the square root, we get plus or minus 2. So we actually will have two answers here. And I've coded this to accept either one of them. So uh, next, let's go through here. Let's figure out the y. To find the corresponding y's, we got to plug the 2 back into the original equation. So 2 cubed is 8 minus 2 times 11, so this be 8 minus 22, what is that, 13? No, it doesn't seem right. 8 minus 22, oh, that'd be negative 14. And if I plug in negative 2, this would be negative 8 plus 22, all right, that'd be positive 14. Okay, so we're going to pick and choose either one of these. Uh, we probably should technically do both, but the answer is just looking for one of them. We're going to plug in the y, I'll plug in, I'll plug in negative 14, and I'll plug in the x is 2, and we're going to solve for b. So when does negative 14 equal 2 plus b? Well, that's when b equals negative 16. So just also hypothetically, if we switch that around to a positive and this back to a negative, b could also equal positive 16. So we know m is 1, and our b would equal positive or negative 16. Type in either one. The computer should accept both of them. All right. The altitude of a ski hill is given by the equation 5 minus x minus cosine x. Okay, what the heck does that mean? 500. So, uh, you know, we got the Desmos, right? 
So 500 minus x minus cosine of x. Um, make sure this is in the right mode. Change my settings over here. Move my noggin. Uh, yeah, okay, we want to be in radian, so. Okay. So we got a hill that goes up and down. Yay, super fun. Okay. Find the initial slope of the hill. So we want to know, okay, like what angle the slope. So it's starting to go down looking at that. So we should get a negative slope. So if this is the altitude, the slope is the rate of change or aka the derivative. So let's take the derivative of this equation here. The derivative of 500 goes away. Negative x is negative 1. And negative cosine is the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So negative cosine goes to positive sine. All right, so if we want to find the initial slope, what we need to do is to plug in zero into this equation. We're going to do f prime of zero. So what is negative one plus the sine of zero? The sine of zero is zero. So the initial slope is negative one, which makes sense. That looks like it's going down one at the beginning. Next. Got the same problem here. Find the slope of the hill after 100 meters. So let's just like look at where is the 100 meters? Probably pretty far. All right. So here's 100. So you see, it looks probably a little bit steeper. Okay, so if we want to find the slope of 100 meters, we're just going to take our derivative button and we're not going to plug in zero but we're going to plug in a hundred so we want to do f prime of 100 what's negative one plus sine of 100 okay so let's go through i got to use the calculator here so negative one plus sine of 100 we get negative 1.5064, which looks it looks a little bit steeper than before. Okay, so let's submit the quiz. Let's see if my answer key is set up all right. Eight points here, seven point seven five out of eight. Did I miss up this problem? I chose that answer and it didn't like it. Did it? Hmm. Yep, um, maybe, I mean, that should be the right answer, so I must have that one wrong. Anything else? All right, guys, if you have any questions, make sure you ask, but uh, we got the big test coming up, two parts here, and I think you guys should be ready for it. You guys have a great day. I will see you next time.